fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? The Union Pacific train from St. Louis rolled to a stop at the station in Frontier Town. Judd Wright, the station agent, stood watching as passengers alighted and luggage was unloaded. Judd's eyes lighted with interest as a pretty young girl who had just alighted with an older woman companion pointed his way and the two women came toward him. I presume you're the station agent, aren't you? Sure am, Miss. Judd Wright's the name. What can I do for you? I'm Betty Harris, and this is my traveling companion, Miss Stevens. We want a guide to take us to Fort Davis. My father is commandant there. He doesn't know we're coming. Well, old Sam used to serve as a guide for the army. He's sort of old now, but I reckon he could get you to the fort like as not. Well, where would I find him? Well, you go up the main street and you turn left at the Wells Fargo office, and old Sam's place is just beyond Joe Jolly's Brandon Iron Shop. Oh, oh dear. I'm afraid with all those directions. Now, hold on. I think I see old Sam over there watching the unloading. Sam! Hey there, Sam! Sam. Here he comes, ma'am. Oh, good. You calling me, Judd? I sure did, Sam. This here's Colonel Harris' daughter. How do you do? That one's Miss Stevens. Yeah, how do you? They want to get a guide to take him to Fort Davis. Uh-oh. That's one place you don't want to go right now, miss. Why, why do you say that? But the engine is on the war path between here and Fort Davis. Colonel Harris has been having a lot of trouble with him. And if they was to find out you was his daughter, they'd capture you sure as shooting, so as to have a hold over the colonel. Chief Blackhawk is mighty smart that way. Oh, nonsense. There's no way they could find out who I am. I'm not afraid. And I'll pay you well to take us to the fort. But, Betty, dear, if the man says it's dangerous... Stevie, a little excitement will do you good. <laughs> How about it, Sam? Will you guide us? Just a minute, miss. If Sam says it isn't safe, he ought to know what he's talking about. Best thing to do is to get word to your father that you're in Frontier Town. Then he can Well, I come... don't intend to stay around this town waiting. If he won't take us, I'll find someone who will. Come along, Stephen. We'll go to the hotel. Yeah, if you change your mind, let me know. <laughs> that one sure has got a mind of her own. Yep, and it's going to get her into trouble. You just wait and see.
Later that day, Sam the guide was in the Bright Lights Cafe talking to one of the townsmen. Well, let me tell you, if I was a few years younger, though, I wouldn't have turned down a chance to take a good-paying guiding job this morning. Well, why'd you turn it down, Sam? You still can ride. You know all the trails for miles around. Sure, but there was two women, one of them young, who wanted to go to Fort Davis. I ain't up to play the wits against Black Hawk and his Apaches. They're on the warpath down that way, you know. Sure, but they know you, Sam. They might not bother you at all. Uh, you can think what you like about that. But I know if them Injuns found out what a prize it would be capturing that young girl, they'd stop but nothing to do it. You see, she's Colonel Harris' daughter. The colonel's daughter, eh? Black Hawk sure would like to capture her, I reckon. Sure. That'd give him a hold over the commandant at Fort Davis. I told her to stay in Frontier Town and try to get word to her father she was waiting here. Hey, it's good advice, all right. Yeah, but she don't want to take it. But there isn't anybody around here that'll risk the chance of trying to guide her through to the fort. Almost a hundred miles through unfriendly Indian territory. Well, I gotta be getting along. See you later. As Sam left the cafe, a swarthy half-breed named Red Wolf, who had been listening nearby, followed. Meantime, Tonto, Indian companion of the Lone Ranger, who had been standing at the back of the cafe, waited a moment, then he, too, left unobserved by the back door. An hour later, he reined up at the camp he shared with the Lone Ranger in the Enchanted Hill. Oh, fella. Oh, fella. Oh. Well, Tonto, anything new in town? Ah, girl, daughter Colonel Harris, come to town with woman. Yes? Try to get old Sam to guide him to Fort Davis. Him say him not go. Sam's right. The Indians are on the war path down that way. Black Hawk would like to capture a prize like the colonel's daughter. Mm, that's right. Indian scout Red Wolf in Cafe. Him hear about colonel's daughter. Him go to a hotel. He find out him offered to guide girl and woman to fort. Hmm. So Red Wolf has been scouting for the colonel's troops. I don't trust him at all. Now, me think him cause much trouble, Kimasabi. I know, but we haven't had proof. Toto, if he guides Miss Harris... No telling what the outcome might be. Not what me think. If we go to Frontier Town, be ready to follow them. Here, Silver. There's a big fellow, easy. Come on, Silver. Get him out. Come. Darkness had fallen by the time the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the outskirts of Frontier Town. They pitched temporary camp outside the town, and then the Lone Ranger busied himself putting on a disguise. I don't think they'll start until dawn, Toto. Mm, that's right. Uh, why you put on disguise, Kimasabi? You not want to wear a mask, maybe? Oh, I wear my mask just the same, Toto. But we'll run the risk of being captured by the Apaches. If that happens, I want to be prepared. Uh, but we not let it happen. Black Hawk is very sly. The Red Wolf, the women's guide, is what I suspect him to be. Won't be easy going. Uh, we watch Red Wolf plenty close. He discovers we're following them. We'll have trouble on our hands, I feel sure of that. Well, that's right. Him get word to Black Hawk, maybe. Just before dawn, you got to watch for their departure from the hotel. And come here and tell me. Ah, uh, me do it. There, I'm finished. Now we get a couple of hours rest. <laughs> It was dawn when Tonto, who had gone to watch the hotel, came back to the edge of town to report to the Lone Ranger. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Huh. Well, Tonto? Girl, woman, just leave hotel with Red Wolf. Oh? Them travel on Southwest Trail, Kimasabi. Them going horseback. Have pack horse for baggage. All right. We'll leave right now. They'll be easy to follow. Well, that's right. Red Wolf is loyal to the fort as he says he is. He may get them through without trouble by sticking to this side of the Pecos River. Most of the trouble is beyond the river. Ah. We go now? Yes, Kimasabi. Here, Silver. All right, fellow, let's go. Sit down. Uh, One, Silver! Come on, Silver! All that day, Red Wolf led Betty and Miss Stevens along the Southwest Trail. Betty was in high spirits as they rode along that afternoon. <laughs> Imagine that old guide, Sam, refusing to bring us. Red Wolf will certainly be rewarded for leading us to the fort. Ah, uh, that's right. 
I don't quite like the way he said that, Betty. Oh, don't be silly, Stevie. He just takes it for granted. Dad will reward him well. Soon we come to hill near river. We stop at bottom of hill, make camp for night. But why can't we just keep going? I know I won't sleep a wink out here in the open hills. It's not good travel at night. You get sleep. Good red wolf keep watch till dawn. Oh, Stevie, you have an ounce of adventure in your makeup. I'm having loads of fun. If we come through this without being scalped, we'll be lucky. That's what I think. Oh, stop worrying. Enjoy the trip. Dad is certainly going to be surprised when he sees us riding up to the fort. Uh, white chief at fort get plenty surprised. You stop here. Me ride up hill, have a look. Go! Ha! Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had followed Red Wolf and the women without being observed. As they mounted a rise in the trail, the Lone Ranger called a halt. Oh, sir. Oh, 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 you see him, maybe? Yes, at least I can see the girl and the woman. They seem to have stopped to camp for the night. And what we do? We'll move a little closer and we'll camp, too. These binoculars come in handy. Now, wake him, Sabi, wake Yes? Do not put him away yet. What's the matter? You look up a hill over there. All right. Oh, smoke. Signal fire. Ah, maybe me use glasses, huh? Yeah, here they are. Uh-huh. Uh, me see Red Wolf. Him said in smoke signal to Apache. Toto, are you sure? Oh, him tell Apache about Colonel's daughter. That proves Red Wolf has aspired the fort for Black Hawk. Not right. It mean Apache cross river maybe tonight. The sun was setting as Betty and Miss Stevens, having made camp, waited for Red Wolf to return. Betty, I... I'm scared to death. Why hasn't that redskin come back? I told you I didn't trust him. Oh, I wish you'd listen to that other guide who told you not to come on this trip. Oh, don't be silly, Stevie. Red Wolf is probably scouting around to make sure things are all right. I wish I could be as sure. Honestly, Betty, if you would... Oh! Look! What on earth? A masked man. I'm sorry I heard you, Miss Harris. Believe me, you've no need to be afraid. But who are you? You came upon us so quietly. Now keep your voice down, please. Oh. My companion and I left our horses hidden in a clump of trees. He went down near the river. I came here to warn and to help you. This is terrible, Betty. We should never... Please forget my mask and consider me as a friend. Oh. I know your father, Colonel Harris, well. He sent me this letter a week ago. Oh, I see. You spoke of warning us. Yes. Your guide, Red Wolf, has deserted you. He sent smoke signals to the Apaches. They'll be coming here. But Father trusts Red Wolf. I know. Come up on that rise with me where we can see the other riverbank. All right. I'll use my binoculars. Mm -hmm. There's your proof. Here, look. All right. I don't see anything. It's Red Wolf on the other bank talking to a band of Indians in war paint. He's pointing this way. Oh! Let's go back to your camp. Oh, I can't believe it. To think I trusted Red Wolf. Come here, Now, listen, my friend. What is it, Toto? Me go to watch at Riverbank. Me see plenty Indian canoes. Them get ready to land on this side. The Apaches. They've come to capture the colonel's daughter. If they do, it may mean either her life or the surrender of Fort Davis. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. As the Lone Ranger talked to Betty and Miss Stevens at their camp, Tonto appeared with the startling news that the Apaches were about to land in canoes. The Lone Ranger knew they must act quickly. He thought for a moment, then he spoke hurriedly. Hello, get back to the horses. Take Scout and try to get through to the fort. Take Silver with you. Me take Silver? But keep us... I have a fight. plan that may work. We'll start the women's horses back along the trail with empty saddles to mislead the Apaches for a short time. But if we're without Trust horses... Trust me, please. Now, what you try to do, Kim? We'll head for the river bank right now and hide there. I hope to get one of the Indian canoes. As soon as they beach them and head inland, we'll make a try for one and set the others afloat. And that good. Then you bring girls down river to Port Davis. Me tell Colonel, we watch. Go now and hurry. Ah, uh, me go ride scout right and take silver. Adios. Adios. Get out, fellow. I was taking your horses out to the trail. Now we'll head for the river. Come on. Moving with extreme caution, the Lone Ranger led the two women to the riverbank and hid them in a clump of bushes. They could see the flotilla of Apache canoes approaching the shore. Oh, there must be at least a dozen canoes. We are done for. I just know it. Try to be quiet. Try not to move. Those Apaches have sharp ears. Quiet now. They're landing. We're gone. Then what? I'm hoping they'll follow after your horses. But we can't count on it. Oh, let's make a dash for the canoe now. No. We have to move slowly and cautiously. They'll be listening for unusual sounds. All right. Let's go. Be quiet. Very quiet. Moving like three shadows, the Lone Ranger and the two women crept from their hiding place and moved toward the empty canoes at the riverbank. The Lone Ranger knew it wouldn't be long before the Indians discovered the women were gone. Also, he knew they were clever enough to pounce upon any sign he or Tonto might have inadvertently left near the camp. In a few moments, he and his charges reached the canoes. All right, get in that one. I'll shove off the others. Hurry. All right. Come on, Stevie. As Betty cautiously stepped into the canoe, the Lone Ranger hurriedly started to move him from one to the other, shoving him into the stream. He reached all the three of the canoes... But his plan was interrupted by Miss Stevens. Oh! Uh-oh. They will bring the Apaches to us. Stevie slipped. Oh, I'm so sorry. I got all wet. I... Oh, quick. Oh, they heard your scream. Oh. Grab a paddle, Miss Harris. Oh. Those Indians will reach the shore in a moment and see us. We've got to get out of range of their guns before they do. Oh. If Stevie hadn't slipped and screamed, you would have had time to sink those three remaining canoes. I, I couldn't help it. It's all right, Miss Stevens. Oh, they've reached the shore. Yes, they're getting into those three canoes. Oh, they're shooting at us. We're out of range of their guns now. But not out of danger, I'm sure. I know. They'll be after us in those other canoes shortly. It's all my fault. Forget it. Get down low. This all seems so hopeless. Our one big hope is that Tonto reaches the fort. The troopers start upstream on the river trail. We'll do our best to keep ahead of those other canoes. That's the main thing right now. It was almost dawn when Colonel Harris was awakened by his orderly at Fort Davis. Colonel, Colonel, please, sir. But <laughs> see where? Well, please, sir. Uh, one of our Indian scouts, Red Wolf, has arrived with very important news, sir. <clears throat> Red Wolf brings news. Get him in here to us. Yes, sir. Come in here, Red Wolf. Uh, here he is, sir. Yeah. Oh. Me bring news for White Chief. What is it, Red Wolf? Speak up. Chief Black Hawk. Him got plenty braves gathered south Fort Davis. One day ride from here. South of here. My other scouts have reported all the Apaches were between here and Frontier Town to the north. Red Wolf know what him see. Chief Blackhawk leave other braves at north to village. Him make trick. Him think white chief at Fort believe other tribes come from south. I see. 
Blackhawk wants us to think he has reinforcements coming from the south and that we'll be frightened into giving up, him. Eh? Oh, that's right. Sergeant, this is our chance. Yes, sir. Give orders that we ride immediately. We ride south and take Blackhawk by surprise. Then we can go after the northern part of his tribe later. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good work, Red Wolf. The news you just brought gives us a chance to lick Black Hawk. Ah, that's good. Get moving, Sergeant. Give that order. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Half an hour later, the troopers, girded for battle, moved out of the big gates of the fort with Colonel Harris in the lead. Lieutenant Rogers, after today, Black Hawk and his tribe will cause us no more trouble. Lucky for us, Red Wolf found out about it. Wait, Colonel. Someone's riding this way. Uh, Looks like an Indian leading a big white horse. Yes, sir. He's waving at us. Halt the troop. Yes, sir. Troop! Oh! Oh, there. He's been riding hard. Came from the North Trail. Yes, sir. Most of Most of us. Oh! Oh! Who are you and what do you want? You ride from Port... You get news already, maybe. Yes, we're riding south to meet Black Hawk. We'll have to take you into custody. Oh, you're not savvy. Black Hawk, north of here. What is this, a trick? Red Wolf, our scout, told us he was... You not trust with Red Wolf. Him not tell truth. Lieutenant, send one of the men to the fort with this Indian. Put him under guard. Yes, sir. We haven't time to listen to him. No, no, you wait. Uh, Listen here, Redskin, if you think... Girl with yellow hair, blue eyes, travel with lady, thin like reed. I'm in danger from Apache. Huh? Girl, daughter of a colonel. This is a trick, Colonel. Hold on, I'll... Lieutenant. He described my daughter and a friend, Miss Stevens. Not right. Red Wolf, lead him into trap. Him give signal to Apache. Great heavens, if this is true, It's we'd... true. Them come to Frontier Town, want to come to Fort. Others warn them of danger. Red Wolf, say him, bring them here. What's happened to them? Where are they? Them in canoe with friend. Them coming down river. You take troops. Ride up river trail. Red Wolf lied to get us to move south here. Ah, if it hadn't been for you, would have ridden into a trap. There's no time to lose, Colonel. But how do I know you tell the truth? Here. Let me bring you this. Here. A silver bullet. And he's with him. I should have recognized his mount. Ah, you hurry. Maybe you're too late. Get up there. Lieutenant! We're moving up the river trail on the double. We've got to get there in time. Yes, sir. Through! At the gallop! Meantime, by superhuman efforts, the Lone Ranger managed to keep ahead of the Apaches in the canoes. They were gradually getting closer, and bullets fell only a few feet short of the fleeing canoe. Oh, I can't paddle anymore. I just can't. I know we'll be killed. We can't get away now. Keep down. Both of you lie in the bottom of the canoe. No. No, I'll take my chances with you. Oh, they're closer. Nothing can save us now. I'll try to hold them off. All right, we'll head for shore and take cover. Betty Harris watched in amazement as the masked man swung the paddle in fast, strong strokes. His seemingly tireless muscles rippled under the sleeves of his shirt. And disregarding the savages moving along behind them, he turned the canoe toward shore and pushed it swiftly through the water. Just ahead was a low bluff covered with boulders, and the Lone Ranger headed for the beach just below it. In a few moments, the canoe grated on the shore. All right, get out, hurry. Now we'll head for those boulders, get going. Ah, here we are. We'll be sheltered temporarily. It's our last stand. In a few moments, they'll land and surround us. The troopers, how do they reach the fort? Oh, thank God. Some of the soldiers are heading up the shore. Taken completely by surprise, the Indians didn't have a chance to launch their canoes. The Lone Ranger left the women behind the boulders and went into the thick of the battle. A few minutes later, he heard Betty scream. The girl. Get him, pale face. No, help. You dirty spy. <laughs> Me kill you with knife. Look out. This will settle you. <laughs> All right, now drop that knife. <laughs> drop what I say. <laughs> now take this. Oh, you got here just in time. He was good. It's all right now. <laughs> well, the fight's over. 
I'll take you to your father. Later, after returning to Fort Davis, Betty and Miss Stevens were in the colonel's headquarters where he was talking to the Lone Ranger and Tonto. I want to thank you both for what you've done. Thanks are necessary, Colonel. Well, I don't think Black Hawk will bother you anymore. No, and neither will Red Wolf. Oh, I think I trusted that awful Indian. The West just frightens me to death. Everything frightens you to death, Stevie. Now that it's over, it was a wonderful adventure. You have a very brave daughter, Colonel. Oh, thank you. And a very headstrong one, too. You know, what Betty needs is a man with a strong hand to curb those impulses of hers. Uh, perhaps. <laughs> uh, well, Tom and I will leave for Frontier Town now. We'll be seeing you again sometime. <laughs> it better we leave, Malky. Yes. Uh, adios. Adios to you. And thank you. My, that masked man isn't afraid of anything. <laughs> well, maybe not, but... He certainly left in a hurry when I hinted Betty needed a strong hand. Dad, I could almost (laughs) wring your neck for that. Just when he was beginning to pay me compliments, too. He belongs to the West, Betty. So you might as well forget him. I'll never forget him. Never. Oh, I'll probably be an old maid like Stevie. Just because that masked man is beyond my reach. So there. Betty, (laughs) what a thing to say. (laughs) The West would be full of old maids if all the girls who set their caps for the Lone Ranger felt the same way about it, Betty. You see, he's dedicated his life to his country and his people. The pioneers out here in the great American West. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.